All right, guys, so I feel like this has been like a long awaited video about my um, abdominal plasty or skin removal surgery. I had it back in, um, I think it was April 1st, 2015. And it was after I had lost half my size and I had been at my goal weight for exactly a year and I was down 140 pounds. I had my surgery done in Carmel, Indiana, which is a suburb um, on the north side of Indianapolis. Um, I reside in the Indianapolis area, and my surgeon was Dr. Turkle. I'm pretty sure her first name is Janet, so you can look up T-U-R-K-L-E. Um, this was a surgery not approved by um, insurance. Most abdominal plasties are not, unless the excess skin on your stomach is actually causing abrasions and causing like a secondary condition, like abrasions that um, create an open wound where you're going to have like bacterial infection kind of a bed sore type of thing um, so plastic surgery like this is um, typically out of pocket um, it was an abdominal plasty with a repair of diastasis recti. Diastasis recti is when the um, longitudinal longitudinal um, abdominal muscles separate, typically due to pregnancy. So I had um, one pregnancy before losing most of the weight. I lost 120 pounds, had another pregnancy. I'm only 5'1", so as I got bigger, my abdominal muscles separated and they were very, very um, like loose and saggy. So you could tell by the way that my stomach looked that you could actually see like the sagginess of my abdominal muscles. And then the abdominal muscles should be close together and mine were separate. Separated and you could put your fingers like in when you kind of like touched my stomach. So I had the skin removal. Um, so basically excess skin above the belly button and below were removed as you guys can see in my pictures. Um, and there was no liposuction whatsoever. And then there was repair of the diastasis recti where the abdominal muscles were actually sewn back into place. So there wasn't that gaping hole um, that occurred from having, you know, multiple pregnancies. So, um, diastasis recti removed, skin was removed. It was about four pounds removed, and that was the estimate from the physician. And that was the estimate, um, like comparing my weight before and after. Um, so no liposuction. So my recommendation is that you get within 10 pounds of your goal weight, your permanent healthy goal weight that you want to be at forever before having the surgery because... If you need more fat to be lost, you'll have to pay for liposuction. There's no guarantee that the fat cells that you have sucked out won't come back. Typically, if you have liposuction and you regain weight, um, when it comes back, it's usually not desired. It doesn't look the way that you want. It's harder to get off. Um, and then typically you gain more fat back in the spot that you originally have it removed from. So make sure you're at goal weight. Um, I had no liposuction done. My downtime was projected to be three weeks, but I needed to be off for four weeks. I went back to week work at week number four and I couldn't do it. So I went home and I actually took off five full weeks. Um, for those first five weeks, I walked, walked around like a hunchback woman. So like my back was like hunched over and I could hardly stand up straight. No exercise till week number six where I started walking on a treadmill. I was told I could do light weights 10 pounds at week number eight. I don't think I even did them till week number 12. I was so sore. I was told that I could do exercises for my abs at week 12. Nope, wasn't trying to do that. Um, I did, waited a four months. So I did weights at three months. I did abdominal weights at four months. I only did walking and bicycling, um, I think up until week number 12. And the entire time that I was off, I rested. I did everything that I was supposed to do. And I did not um, gain any weight. I actually lost another three pounds. So from the time that I had the surgery till I got in the gym, I think I was down seven pounds. Um, was the surgery worth it? Yes. Was it extremely painful? It was painful as fuck. I'm not even going to lie to you. I felt like I was going to die. My surgeon was amazing, but it is very painful. I was advised or given the opportunity to get, get like a numbing pack that would go under your stomach, your abdominal, between your abdominal muscles and your skin. 
before I was closed back up. It was like an extra $500 out of pocket. Should have got it. Day one was great. When the numbing wore off on day two, like I had to call my doctor. It was so painful. Um, I feel like I was going to die. My husband was like upset, like upset. Like he um, was like rethinking the whole surgery as well. I was rethinking the whole surgery. Um, it actually took me five years to want to get the surgery done. Um, I think when I was about 165 pounds, I contemplated it. Then I thought about it again. I got to my goal weight. I could have had the surgery done probably in 2012. I was really close to my goal weight. And then I got to the point in 2014, I was just tired of the, the skin flapping around because I would hide under my pants. I would wear snug jeans, leggings, no one could see it. And then I could just like hold it in my hands and you can got, you guys can see that from my pictures. Um, but I thought I was going to die. Like the pain was excruciating for the first 48 hours. You need someone with you. Like you have to have someone with you, um, really for the first four days. So you could have some, you need to have someone with you, um, Get it done by a board certified doctor. Don't be going to DR. Like all that stuff is the same as the as the US. Um, typically for most people, and it depends on the area um, that you that you live in. Like Beverly Hills, Miami is going to be more expensive than the Midwest. Um, but it's going to cost most people out of pocket just for an abdominoplasty anywhere from six to ten thousand dollars. I mean, mine at this point was almost was more than four years ago so you know inflation happens um but pick a board certified surgeon i picked my doctor off of three things i picked it off of her experience and all of her credentials and the fact that she was board certified that was number one number two i looked at the after photos and i looked for women who looked like me i stopped looking at websites of women that didn't look like me before and they didn't have the after that i wanted to look like so if you're comparing yourself to women who whose befores don't even look like you move on to another surgeon so i found a lot of women that she did work on that looked exactly like me and i was like okay this is cool and then number three when i met her she didn't look like plastic that was extremely important for me. I did not want a surgeon to work on me that looked like someone had worked on them. Like, that was a no-no. I didn't want my, you know, I'm not even trying to be mean, but I didn't want a surgeon that looked like they had always been worked on. I just wanted, like, a real deal doctor. So those were the three things that were most important to me. So my checkups were like... Um, I think it was like one week, then two weeks, then six weeks, then eight. And then it was like three months and four months and whatever. Um, a lot of the care on my wounds were some, um, like a stem cell serum that only her office sold to patients that she had serviced. Um, so you can't get this on any website. You can only get it from her. Um, and then I wore like my pressure garments and waist trainers for the first four months. There was tons of swelling. Um, but I took care of my scar every day, twice a day, um, like clockwork. And then after I ran out of the serum, which I did use for six months, I kept buying it that I would just use like cocoa butter. Um, I heard Mederma works well, but what she had was, um, something that was like the highest quality out there. So I chose to use that. I loved the surgery. You can hardly see my scar because it runs right on my bikini line. So most people are like, I can't even see it at all. Um, it runs from like hip to hip, so it doesn't go around my back. But I am thrilled that I got the surgery. I'm blessed that I had enough time off to be able to take the five weeks off that I needed. A lot of surgeons will tell you you can go back at week two to four, but I'm telling you it was painful. I could hardly um, sit. Um, it was just really, really hard to be able to stand and walk around and stuff like that. So I would say if you're planning on having the surgery, make sure you have four weeks off. But those are the most common questions that people ask me. So if you guys have additional questions that I have not covered in this video, let me know. I will answer um, everything that you guys, you know, have to ask or want to know. But I'm hoping this was so helpful. Sorry again, it took a while to put this together. But if I promise that I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it for you guys.